do for vectorization, obviously you have you'd have an image. So you make sure it's in selection mode here. So when you have you you select the selection mode and then you go to file and import. So when you go into import, you'll need to select down here where what type of image you're trying to import. And this can be I mean you can see it's pretty comprehensive. There's most images here. So what we've got here is a JPEG. If you don't know per se, you can just put it to all image formats. All right, so we're going to be doing a JPEG. We've got this one, logo. This is actually a fairly difficult one to uh, vectorize. And now you'll see the, the quality of your vectorization is going to depend completely on the quality of your image. You can see this one came in pretty big, but really the quality is not very good. You can see the blurred lines, blurred text. Anytime you have something blurry, it's going to be difficult. And now this is also a good demonstration. See how I can't mess with it? I can't, I can't do anything with it. That's because this, again, the little uh, padlock down here isn't selected. So once you, once you X out the padlock, then you're able to move it and alter it. So I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller. And then I'm going to go about vectorizing it. All right. So once you've resized it, this is your vectorization button. So you click on the vectorization button. And it brings up a menu here. Now, it depends on your job. It can get pretty complicated. But uh, these are the various, uh, I mean, these are different things. Like if you, if you look at the pictures here. It's how closely it'll follow a curve. This allowance here, it it'll it'll it's basically how it's going to vectorize. This is noise filtering. Uh, how straight it's going to follow this line and filter out any kind of anything between. See this this will smooth curves and set them to an angle. So a lot of times you won't have to adjust much. Um, but it is, I mean, it all really depends on your image. Alright, once you've chosen your variables, you can click OK. And it might take some time, depending. Alright, so what we have here, this is the vectorized image. And every time it thinks it sees a new line, it assigns a color. So, you see how this line is gray, this line is black. But really, we want those the gray and the black to be one line. So the way that works is, see, we still have this gray line here and the black line here. Um, you select, like, you, you click on the one color. You hold Shift, or you, I think you can hold Control, but Shift works as well. Hold Shift and click on the other color, and it highlights them at the same time. And then once you've highlighted all the colors you want to merge together, you click color fusion. All right. See now we just have one color, and then the white color is the background. All right. And the what the way vectorization works, the whole idea is, it's it's pulling the lines out of the color that you want. So when I highlight this color here, and click check. It's going to, it's, it pulls the lines out of that image. All right. All right. So it's pulled the lines out of the image, but if you look close, you'll see how it, it, it doesn't really do a good job on the text. A lot of times you'll have to redraw text. We'll go over that a little bit later. So if I had a circle, uh, well, you can see how it, it did this. See how it pulled both lines out of there? Let's see. If you zoom in real close, see how it has the gap in between? It actually pulled the lines. It doesn't pull the image. So that's why it has a separate line. It's just taking the lines. Okay. So after you've done that, um, that's pretty much the basics of vectorizing. 
Now to get it to look good, you have to, a lot of the times you'll have to redraw it. Redraw the image. Alright, the basic thing, after you vectorize something, you have two buttons up here, group and ungroup. Once you vectorize it, you can hit ungroup, and then it'll, it'll put all these separate. It'll separate everything. That way you can, you can select just what you want to deal with. It goes by line. See how I did this entire line? It, it ungroups everything that it thinks is a line. So if we didn't want this here, just this little protrusion, we have to actually connect the line here and then get rid of it. Let's see. All right. So the main way for cleaning up vectorized images is going here into point mode. All right. That looks a little funny, but all these dots are points on that line. When it vectorizes it, it assigns these, this is basically its calculation. You can manipulate them. You can manipulate points on a line. You can also delete them. You can delete points on a line. So if I wanted this line to be straight, I could delete the various handles and points on this line and uh, basically manipulate it to redraw it. Um, so you can, you can freehand manipulate it at each of these points. That's one way of redrawing it. But uh, you can also just get rid of a point. So if we wanted to just do this, you can go to your trash, the, the little trash can here, just delete. And I just deleted the entire line. So what it's going to do, the trash can is going to delete the entire line. See all this? It thinks it's connected here. Well, it's connected. So if you go there, see it deleted the entire outside everything. So if we don't want to do that, then we have to isolate the line. And we do that. So we click on the line. So basically we need to connect it here and here and then isolate that line. All right. Let's see. Okay. So first we add points. All right. So if you click somewhere on the line, you'll notice this little plus symbol up here lit up. So we can add a point. That basically adds a manipulation point. And then click here. Add a point. So we've got our two points. So now that we have them, we can delete beyond that point. Let's see. All right, and use our. You can go over here to the cut tool. Cut tool, and you can click beyond that point. Right. So the cut tool basically connects the two lines. See how it's it's adding points here? And then you can use this to delete above those lines, above those points. Alright, so you'd want to use your, your cut tool near here. First select the line. See, it, it has my two cut points there. These big square boxes are the cut points. So once you put your boxes there, you can use the cut tool to remove anything above them. All right. So once we've done that, that's pretty good. Then we go about connecting the lines. I think that's enough for that for now. Um, we're going to go to Tom dealing with a variable list. All right, Tim. Thanks for the basic overview of the, uh, the cleanup process there. Pretty much, guys, just to remind you, when you vectorize an image, I mean, it, it can take years to get good and fast at doing it. Um, if you have an image that is really this awful, just noticing Tim doing it, 
I don't know if he if he picked up on this, but this actual image itself is has multiple lines on top of each other. So as you saw him clicking the trash can, he was actually clicking it four, five, six times. The reason why, just to remind you of the colors, is as Tim was telling you that the lines get pulled out, the reason why you do that color fusion at the beginning is because every time that Gravistyle, you got to remember it's an AutoCAD program, when it sees the actual color shade difference, it will draw another line and another line. So even though this line appears black, if it even has a tint of shade of difference when you scan it in or input it in, it'll draw four, five, six lines right on top of each other, and they will look like a single line, and they're not. That's why these image cleanups are, are really difficult sometimes. So if you're having a lot of trouble on it, just give us a call, and we'll walk you through any help that you need with, with the file. We'll have you can send the file, and we can pretty much do anything that you need us to do.